Well, g'day curd nerds. I'm Gavin Weber from littlegreencheese.com and littlegreenworkshops.com.au and this is another Ask the Cheese Maker session. This is session five, I believe. So, on to today's questions. Um, the first one is from Wise. Now, I'm not sure where Wise is from. Okay, it says, Hello Gavin, I, I believe I'm a huge fan of your videos and YouTube channel. And have to say, your work and skills are amazing. Thanks, Wise. Appreciate that. Uh, I have been following your clips, and I'm struggling to make my own cheese. Wherever I, att sorry, whenever I attempt to make the curd, it always ends up a gooey, ends up gooey, and not a solid particle. I learn to make. I'm learning to make mozzarella first, and using citric acid, and both animal rennet and vegetable rennet, depending which is to hand and each time this issue occurs. Can you provide any advice as to what I'm doing wrong? Your guidance is greatly appreciated. Kind regards, Wise. Uh, now, I had a look at the IP address and Wise is from um, somewhere in Asia, I think. Um, and uh, I think what the issue may be, without having any other information uh, especially when you're following the recipe that I posted up um, to the letter is the type of milk. Now let's go through the, the different milk types for cheese making. So obviously um, back in uh, episode uh, three we talked about raw milk and uh, raw goat's milk in particular but raw milk and that is the best milk you can get for cheese making. Obviously the next one is one called cold pressed milk. There's a new process here developed here in Australia where they actually put the milk under high pressure and it kills all the bacteria, all the bad bacteria in the, uh, in the milk. Now it's very expensive, mind you, but it actually has a cream line and everything. Um, so it's a form of pasteurization. So that is the second best type of milk to use for cheese making. The next one is pasteurized milk, but it's unhomogenized. So homogenization basically is when they force the milk through some micro filters. These filters are smaller than the actual fat globules in cow's milk. And what happens, it breaks the fat up and it then becomes, um, uh, it becomes a suspension and it can't rise to the top. So unlike um, unhomogenized milk where the cream rises to the top, um, with homogenized milk, the milk stays, the cream stays suspended within the milk solid itself. Anyway, so pasteurized, unhomogenized is the third best, uh, and that's the one I can readily get my hands on and I use in all of my cheese making videos. The next one is uh, pasteurized and homogenized. Not ideal, but you can add calcium chloride, as I do to all mine anyway, um, and that will hopefully you'll get a lot better curd set. Back in the past when I first started cheese making and before all of this unhomogenized milk came on the market, that is all I had and that's how I used to make a lot of my uh, cheeses. And thankfully today, um, there is that option of having unhomogenized. But homogenized does work if you add the equivalent amount of calcium chloride, as the, uh, which is the same as the amount of rennet that you're going to use. So the fourth one, and the fifth one really shouldn't rate a mention because the next one is ultra ultra pasteurized and ultra pasteurization is where they uh, flash heat the milk and it destroys most of the milk proteins as well as the bacteria and then they cool that down rapidly uh, ultra pasteurization you cannot set a curd to it it is almost impossible and i think this is where wise may be having a problem uh, with the, the type of milk, so it'll be very hard to get hold of ultra uh, of pasteurized homogenized milk that hasn't been ultra pasteurized. So that could be the issue, wise. And then the final one is ultra heat treated or UHT milk. The only thing you can make out of that, as uh, the same as ultra pasteurized, is ricotta. Basically, when you hit it with a lot of acid, um, you can actually curdle the milk. And, uh, and strain it once you've heated it up and you can make ricotta out of it. But it doesn't have the protein structure in both ultra pasteurized and ultra heat treated to form a solid curd. 
you're just wasting your time if that's the sort of milk you're going to be trying to make cheese with unfortunately anyway so hopefully wise i've answered your question i reckon it is the type of milk you're using if you can get your hands on some um, uh, normal pasteurized unhomogenized even homogenized milk that hasn't been ultra pasteurized so you have to check on the bottle usually it says it if not then try a different brand of milk and hopefully it'll all end up well okay the next question is from uh, Joe and Joe says hi Gavin I am really new to cheese making and live in the United Kingdom and hope you could provide me with the questions oh, with suggestions to two questions uh, can you recommend a semi soft cheese to make not really overly difficult that has a bit of bite to it so not so not bland that I could make uh, and that in the future when more practiced I could start to add different flavors to uh, all right we'll answer that one first Joe uh, I reckon uh, because from the your neck of your wood from the neck your neck of the woods uh, Kefili is the answer to all of your troubles I think uh, Kefili Cheese is a video tutorial on the channel, just go and search for it. Uh, it's actually ready in three weeks. It has a cheddaring process in it, uh, but it is heavily salted to form a solid rind really quickly. And it has a, a probably a, a one centimeter thick rind. It's a natural rind, so you don't wax this cheese and you don't vacuum pack it. You let it create a natural rind. Um, and Basically, the inside of the paste is is um, is not runny. It's solid and firm. Uh, tastes great, but the rind is just amazing. So you can actually add things to kefili uh, as well, different herbs and uh, and and spices um, to spice up that cheese. So the second question is uh, then also a softer cheese with some attitude. And where can I get the recipes? I am an extra strong mature cheddar fan myself so i can understand why i am looking uh sorry so you can understand why i'm looking for some bite that is quick to produce um i would be grateful for uh if you could point me in the right direction best wishes joe uh thanks joe anyway for your question so the second one hmm let me have a think about it soft cheese with some bite uh i think the uh the queso fresco cheese that I made, uh, which only takes six hours to make and is ready to eat straight away. Uh, if you add chili to that, you'll definitely get a bite, but probably not in the same bite as a strong cheddar cheese. Um, I would say, once again, uh, kefili aged uh, to probably two months will give you a strong bite as well. Uh, whereas cheddar needs at least six months before they call it um, a mature cheese. Uh, vintage cheddar is up to two years. Really, it is a bit hard because all good cheeses or all hard cheeses need time for the lactic bacteria to convert the lactose that's still in the cheese um, into lactic acid. And that's what gives you the sharp taste uh, and the, uh, the crumbly texture of those um, matured cheddars. So, Kefili again, I think. Um, you could even try the uh, Derby and omit the sage and age that for uh, two to three months. You'll get a quicker uh, bang for your buck there as well. Also, there is a Lester video that I have as well, um, which has a cheddaring process. Uh, and I think that's ready in three months as well. And that was quite sharp, if I remember rightly. So Joe, there's some suggestions there uh, for you. Hopefully um, you'll find those videos. Just search within the channel and you shouldn't have too many problems at all. So thanks once again, everybody. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, uh, you can go uh, pop down and subscribe to underneath the video there somewhere. Don't forget to also click the little bell so you get notified when a new video gets published. Also, if you want any of the recipes, pop over to uh, littlegreencheese.com. That's my cheese making blog that I have. 
Um, I've got a fair few of the recipes up there, probably not some of the ones in the last four or five months. I'm a little bit behind there, but I'm struggling to catch up. Um, and the full recipe is there and you can print it out. Um, so that's a handy tip for anybody. I also have a, a cheese making book called Keep Calm and Make Cheese. You can find that on Amazon, Apple iBook Store. It's also available at uh, littlegreencheese.com if you pop through there uh, and you can pick yourself up a PDF copy. In Australia, you can actually get a printed copy uh, if you pop over to littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Um, and uh, go to the cheese section, cheese books, and you'll see my book. I print it up and bind it myself. It's all very exciting. Anyway, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds. We'll see you next Wednesday with another episode of Ask the Cheese Man.